Welcome to a Parallel Project Training APM Project Management Qualification Podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 6th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, study guide and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com. Hello, welcome to another Parallel Project Training Podcast with John Bolton and Paul Neighbour. We are working through the APM Project Management Qualification, formerly known as the, as the APMP. It's a bit like that rock star, isn't it? Prince. Formerly known as what? Formerly known as APMP, Prince. yeah. Oh. <laughs> so we're up to uh, leadership and teamwork. I've got no idea what you're on about. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so the um, <laughs> assessment criteria for this are... Um, Describe typical leadership qualities, explain the principles and importance of motivation, and explain the impact of leadership on team motivation. These are pretty obvious. Yes. Team performance and motivation. These are pretty obvious topics. They what are. makes a good leader? So it's something quoted from the fifth edition here. Yes. Leadership is the ability to establish vision and direction and to influence and align others towards a common purpose and to empower and inspire people to achieve success. It enables the project to proceed in an environment of challenging and of change. change and uncertainty. Yay. That's quite nice, that. Let's hear it for the leaders. Yay. Describe typical qualities of a leader. I always think of Churchill. I mean, Churchill was a good leader. And his moments. At his moments. Yeah, he wasn't very good in the First World War. <laughs> no. No. Well, he was responsible for Gallipoli, as I remember. Yes. Yeah, yeah which was a mitigated failure. Yes. And well, then they say all, lead- all leaders go through a series of failures before they reach success, but I think yeah. that um, there's failure and failure, isn't there? I Yeah, I struggle to... I don't know, really. I mean, I think people like... Um, people hold up like Richard Branson and... Uh-huh. Alan Sugar, hey Margaret Thatcher. I think I think you've got to be given a you've got to have a job to do, haven't you? Yes. You know, and I think leaders are born out of adversity. The bigger the hole you're in, yes, the better you look when you get out of it. Yes. Okay. You know, and that's the white knight theory of leadership. That's right. Yeah. So you've kind of unless <laughs> unless you the only way's up. Isn't it? Uh, sometimes, yes. yes. You know, it's so, like uh, turnaround projects. Are yeah, quite, yeah, that's um, right. Quite easy to be. A, well, that's a what makes me laugh. Leader. Is the project managers get you know get plaudits for you know turning around a failing project. Mm-hmm. I mean, the really good project managers don't get to a mess in the first place. Yes, you know. Yes. I mean, you wouldn't have any failing projects if yes. everybody did the job. Just think about those that won the project management awards. Yeah, I'm not too sure they turned around projects. They're more. No. All right. But you take the point. I mean, yes, you know, I know in organisations the the ones who come in and recover the failing sort of the projects, re, the, the sort of organisation, yeah. yeah, the Red Adair School of Project Management are the 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 ones who get um, all the plaudits really, mm. and the ones who just plod away and successfully deliver get ignored sometimes. But I mean, on a more general, you know, like, I think lead, there was you always get this debate about is leadership the same as management or is management yes. the same as leadership? And they're just two different aspects of the same thing, really. And I think the APM, yeah, okay. yeah. I think all these models get a bit confused between the two, frankly. I think, you know, leadership is, is about pulling, isn't it? It's where you want to get people to want to follow you. Yes. And you sort of set a vision and you go, right, I'm going to go this way. And everybody's kind of up for it and, and supports you in that. So in, in the book here, it says vision, drive, energy, commitment, positive relationships, That's productivity, right. raises morale. Yeah. Empowerment. Girls, empowerment. Exceptional events are resolved. Yeah, productive and constructive feedbacks provided. Um, prote- you know, protect the team. You know, f- yes, you know, help form the wagon train when when things aren't going so well. Someone once drew me a graph where the, of the life cycle of projects, and it starts off really positive. Everyone, well, hey, yeah. you team, and it goes boom down. And they made the point that actually leadership matters not at the beginning, no, no. but at the dip because yeah, you right. either go down further mm. or you manage to pull people round mm. to. Well, that's the argument about government at the moment, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, because it, it was great during the sort of when things were going well. And it's all gone pear shaped. Yes. And now he's arguably is the government demonstrating leadership now to get us out of the mess. Okay. You know, or are they just 
sort of. Okay, so now is the point where you decide the quality of the yeah, l- leaders right. that you've appointed. I'm not, I don't want to make a political point. I mean, I, I'm not, in, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with this particular hypothesis, but I uh-huh. think that you know when things are going badly is when you need your leaders. Yes, that's right. You know, and like you say, the white knight sort of school of <coughs> thought, really. But maybe it's a bit too deep all this. But I think you think a project manager has to be a leader because I think you. If you keep on telling people what to do, they'll keep on doing it, but then you've got to tell them what to do next. Yes. You don't build that sort of trust and long-term relationship. That's why I really like the situational leadership model. The Which we'll come to in one. a minute, are we? Yeah, I think so. Well, should uh, we jump to that straight away? Um, yeah. We'll talk about motivation Well, it's actually first. in the next section, Paul, to be honest. It's in 8.4. Yes, I Situational know. leadership. Maybe it, we could deal with it now, really. But um, Hersey and Blanchard talk about situational leadership where you've got... Okay, let's go through it now. Um, different levels of supportiveness Explain and Explain the benefits of adopting a situational leadership model within a project. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think we should do it now because people are going to want to know where 8.4 has gone. Okay. So... All right, we'll go back then. Wait till 8.4. Thanks. 8.4. It's coming 8.4. later. Next podcast. For now, if it's we all manage, about... If we manage to publish... I could put that section in this section, if you like, in the book. We <laughs> could deal with it all in one go. <laughs> right, so let's talk about motivation. Yeah. So principles and importance of motivation. So this is answering the question, explain the principles and importance of motivation. So, I mean, have you ever worked on a project that was demotivated? Yes. Oh, it's bloody awful, isn't it? It is. God. It's horrible. It just becomes a blame game. Oh, it's just miserable, isn't it? It's just like... So it's like pulling teeth. Yes. And the difference that a good leader makes hmm. when they turn up and they get everyone pointing in the right direction. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. And the trust. I think it's to do with trust, really. I think sometimes people just want to be told what to do to start with. Yes. And then they just start to believe in you. Yes, that's right. Mm. That's right. So the principles and importance of motivation. So that's the impact of leadership on team performance. So you get lots of interpersonal conflict in my mm. experience in those situations where you've got poor leadership you get lots of infighting and backbiting yeah that's right people got... misunderstand their roles they don't know what they're there for yes, they, that's they right. sort of stay on their own they look after themselves they don't really play the corporate game that's right that's right you said high staff attrition rates so people go and play somewhere else well they'd rather be in a fun environment than misery wouldn't they yeah that's right most people would that's sort right. of tend to follow the path of least resistance difficult recruiting that's right, because it gets a reputation, doesn't Internally. it? Internally. But oh, I'm not going to go and work with them. Or externally. If it's a big yeah. enough project, you know, people won't join it because they've heard on the grapevine. Oh, no, no. Yeah, or well, they're working really hard over there. Yeah. yeah. So the only people you can get in agency stuff. Nothing that's wrong with agency stuff, but but makes motivation more difficult if you, 90% of your team is externally sourced. Yeah, well, yeah. Absence and sickness, people tend to um, go off sick. They'd rather stay at home than coming to work uh-huh. I'm not suggesting there's any unscrupulousness going on is that a word I don't know but anyway but I think people you know it's if, easier if, to stay in bed with a cold if there is a propensity <laughs> to stay at home they probably capitalise on it more in a poor environment than a good one yes if you don't want to go to work no that's right it doesn't need much to tip you over the edge and I, a poor quality people can't couldn't care less you know a bit slapdash chuck things yes. together that's probably the biggest of these actually the biggest symptom I've seen yeah. Is it the quality? The pride in the work goes down, especially um, yeah. If you've got lots of change or or lots of um, turmoil in the organisation, you think, well, I've got to do this, but it's not actually going to end up in the end result, so it's no. not, not that important, you know. Mm. Probably be changed next week. <laughs> so <laughs> they'll come in and tell me to do something different next week. So why why bother yeah, doing a good job bother. of this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. No, I think there's, you know, motivation is, if people are, if people are all pumped up and, and raring to go, then they'll do a better job, really. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. just goes without saying. State the obvious, really. It is. So then it talks about the principles of motivation. So I expect that's referring to Maslow and... Um, no, Bert's no, the principles are what we just talked about. Okay. We talked about um, poor conflict, mo- uh, conflict, poor motivation, high staff attrition rates, etc. Uh-huh. The, the theories... Um, are the are the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and the um, Hertzberg's Hertzberg's two factor theory? Yeah. Yes. yes. So I mean they're both in the book as well. But um, <clears throat> are they referenced in the new syllabuses? Yeah, they are. I just took them out of the headings to okay. um, 
for a bit of brevity because the, the assessment, the learning outcomes, the assessment criteria are quite long, so yeah. they don't suit themselves to chapters in the book. So they're, they're li- the chapters are, are, are truncated, abbreviated. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So the full ones are in the syllabus, but yeah. So Maslow's triangle's quite well versed now, mm. isn't it? I quite like it, really. Do you? But, um, it's, gone, it's gone out of favour a bit, but I think the layer thing, just go for it. So at the top level, you've got self-actualisation. People will be highly motivated to choose their own life goals, really. You know, if I want to be a watercolour artist and that's what I've wanted to do all my life, then I'll dedicate quite a... I'll sacrifice quite a lot to achieve that. But it says if these lower levels aren't in place, then you're not going to achieve your lifetime goal. So if you're desperate for food and light or or you feel your job security is threatened or if um, you don't like the people you work with or um, you don't feel that you've got clear goals, then... Um, mm. Then, then you won't be motivated. So it's like a layer cake, really. You need the, That's right, the yeah. lower levels in place to get higher levels of, of yeah. motivation. Being chairman of the golf club is got not going to motivate you if you haven't got a job. No, no. The thing that I don't understand about it is people will... It doesn't explain bungee jumping. Blimey. What's, what does that mean? Well, people will do... They'll threaten the safety and security... Or they'll they'll forego food, light, and heat, in order to do one of the higher goals. So they'll go and climb Everest, and in doing that, they'll take risks with safety and security. And so it's 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 not quite, you know, just because you haven't got, um, maybe I've misunderstood the model. No, um, I think you're right. I think it's a good point to make. Actually, I think, um, I mean, the argument is that you get them progressively. Yes. And the removal of one reduces the effectiveness of the others. But I think arguably climbing Everest or bungee jumping is a bit of self actualization. Yes, that's right. So you don't it's not you don't have to withdraw them completely. I mean, they can be simply satisfied yes, without okay. being exemplary, okay. you know. So if so, you're on the point of starvation, then you're not gonna go and climb Everest. No. But you would be prepared to take yeah. slightly lower levels of I mean you you will you will be safe if you if you go and climb Everest. <laughs> yes. You know. <laughs> Belonging is only like part of a team, yes. you know. But people and do- having got it, you will be esteemed. Yes, you know. So I, I think, you know, it's just it's just degrees, isn't it, for each of them? It's not necessarily, you know, one or the other, or the absence of one or the other. It's it's the relative influence of each. Yes, in, mo- in most quite- post sort of post industrial societies, you know, you got no one's really going to die of hunger. I mean, people do, unfortunately, yes. but I mean most. In business situations, you know, you, all of that's pretty well sorted, which is why I think this is all a bit kind of... OK, go I don't on. like this model particularly, because most of them are satisfied well, anyway. Yeah, it works. I find it's most useful if you've got a, a site depot. If you've got a depot away from... So if people are working on a, um, a porter cabin yeah. in the middle of nowhere somewhere... Yeah. Then I've known people. Some people go, well, that just goes with a job, and therefore it's part of self actual You know, I want to get the job done, yes. and therefore I'm prepared to put up with a crappy desk with a wobbly chair, and you know, mm. and not good lighting and everything. But other people go, oh, it's rubbish. This, you know, there's some drafts coming through the window, and it's cold in winter and not in summer. And, yeah. You know, it's no, no one treats their staff like this. You know, <laughs> and that's because they perceive that they've dropped down to this level here. You know. Yeah. Whereas most office projects, they you know, most people have got a warm desk and they don't. <laughs> That's why I prefer the Hertzberg theory. Myself. Do you? Yeah, yeah. I think it's more it's more applicable to projects as well, really. Uh huh. Because you know, in 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 work, in project work, you can give people the true motivators. You can give them recognition. Uh huh. Because what Ma- what Hertzberg said, there are two factors. There's one that are true motivators, and some are what he called hygiene factors. Yes. And the hygiene factors are there simply, they have to be satisfied before you can be motivated. Yes. So the hygiene factors were simply, you know, you don't get motivated by having more of them. And the contentious bit of it really was that he said that salary was a hygiene factor. Yeah. Huh? So more and more money doesn't more and more motivate you, mm-hmm. which people always laugh at because, you know, when you ask them, you say, what do you do? What do you work for? They say money. <laughs> but the argument is, would you work twice as long for twice as much? And some people might say yes. Yes. Would you work three times as long for three times as much? And the answer is probably no. So that at some point there is a break-even. You know, there's a, a point of no return. You can't. 
you can't keep on working harder and harder and harder for more and more money. Yeah, yeah. I was so used... therefore, more you know, it, it can't motivate you any further. Yes, as long as your salary is, is the same as everybody else's. It's commensurate, commensurate with your peers. With, with your peers. Yeah, that's what you said. Then you're, um, you don't feel demotivated or motivated by it. That's right. Um, but the, Withdrawal the, of it will demotivate you. But bonuses or discretionary payments linked to performance. Yes, well, they're, they're sort of recognition. Yes, so that's yeah. Vroom's thing. You know, if Vroom's expectancy theory, if your performance goes up, and your reward goes up, and your effort goes up, and they're linked. Yes. And it, it will motivate people. Yes. But it's not the level of salary. It's like these bankers. You know, they get really pissed off that they're only getting a million pound bonus because their mate is getting yes. two million quid. Yes, right. <laughs> so it totally demotivates them. <laughs> so, <laughs> bless them, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm crying in my beer. Yeah. Yes. I, I, well, I think it's easy to take a pop at them. But I mean, arguably, they, you know, they're earning their money I said they would argue that I suppose I'm sure and so everybody else would and but I think the, I, the the true motivator bit I think is a longer term motivator as well once you've got decent working conditions having a, a comfier chair doesn't motivate you no it just sort of it just is and oh, but if that comfier chair comes as a point of um recognition of your status in the organisation. Well, right. well, that's what they used to do in the old days, wasn't it? You used to get to eat in the director's dining room. Yes, that's right. And, you know, and it's like getting on an aeroplane and turning left instead of right. You know, it's... It's highly motivational. Yes, it's highly people. motivational for some people. It's it's just that recognition that you're... A value to your organisation. Yeah, to, to such to an extent, they're prepared to pay six grand like, for first class. Yes, it's like travelling first class on the train. Yes. Some people think that's a real yes. recognition of how important they are to the organisation. Yes. Most people think it's a rip-off. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Achievement is another true motivator. So being given the opportunity to achieve at one's job, having uh-huh. short, definite, achievable targets. I think that's really important. Just mm-hmm. give, say, I want to do this by Thursday. Mm-hmm. If you give people six months to do something, then they'll, they'll have to wait a long time for recognition. And it might never happen. Mm-hmm. The work itself, I think people just enjoy what they do. You know, I'm quite envious of some people when you see that the work and that how, how comfortable they are doing it. You know, I've got a mate of mine who's a gamekeeper and he loves it. You know, gets paid tap and safety, but he's out in all weathers with his Range Rover and his dogs and, you know, goes shooting and beating and he yes, loves it. It's a hobby. You know, it's a, it's, it's a hobby that he learns a living from. Yes. You know, yes. and I'm quite envious of that sometimes because he's very happy in what he does. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all, you know. So. Anyway, and that's all motivation, really. And those hygiene factors and motivators, you need to be able to differentiate between. Yes, the best example I came up, someone told me about, was um, the sewage system in a building is a hygiene factor. So you don't notice if your drains are working, but you do notice if they're blocked. Mm. <laughs> so it's a real demotivator. if you're. Um, so the hygiene factors are just things that you don't really particularly notice until they're particularly bad. Mm. You never mm. know what you've got till it's gone. Yeah, brilliant. It's questions. Describe oh. five ways in which, which project, project manager, manager might motivate, motivate their team. team. Yeah. Describe how um, leadership is important for um, effective motivation of your team. Mm. I reckon you'll always get a question in this area: teamwork, leadership, motivation. Mm-hmm. It's a key part of project management, isn't it? Yes. Good. Thank you, John. Cheers. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative. To order a study guide, e-learning, or a tutor-led course to go with this podcast, please visit www.parallelprojectstraining.com.